Hello, Paul Tranny here, and I want to show you how you can distort and transform objects, text, really anything in Illustrator. I'm going to start out with a pro tip right now uh, with this illustration of John Mulaney. And the feedback I got on John was the fact that all these lines are a little bit too thick. So how can you uniformly scale down all of these lines? Because they're all different sizes, different colors, but scale everything down by 50%. Well, that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to show you how. First off, I'm going to move one over. So we're going to have two Johns. I'm going to work with this one. These are the lines. This is our control, if you will. This one right here, this is what we're going to be playing with. Preferences, general, going into scaling stroke and effects. That's what we want to do. We want to scale down the stroke and effects. We're going to do this twice. Ready? Scaling it down 50% because I want to make the lines 50% uh, their current thickness. Right, so it scales everything down uniformly. The trick comes into play if you go back into your preferences and you don't scale the strokes and effects when you scale it back up, okay? So at this point, scaling it back up, don't scale those stroke and effects, keep them that same small size and sure enough, you can see it's made them much uh, much smaller, the width is, is thinner. So uh, you could do this to double the, the thickening of line. Think of a technical illustrations, they're like, yeah, everything's too thin. You can beef everything up or make it all thinner uniformly by doing this tip. All right, so let's move on to my next one. In fact, this one I'm gonna go with uh, kind of distorting objects and I'll start with um, actually this character right here. This little guy, right? To show you, I don't know if you use this much, but the Puppet Warp tool we introduced a couple years ago. Puppet Warp allows you to add control points and it actually adds them automatically. Okay, we can see four of them. Because what do I want to do? I want to take this tail and maybe I'll add a pin there. And I want to make it kind of come up like that. Oh, guess what? Put that foot down, have that expand just like that and make it a lot more dramatic. Uh, notice also I want to curve this. Well, guess what? You can also rotate it appropriately as well. So that's the Puppet Warp tool, just reminding you that it does exist and it's fantastic. And it means that I don't have to jump in and edit these individual points because there's way too many of them. Let's talk about distorting text now, okay? Sure, we could break it apart and uh, edit the individual points. We can go into transform, uh, excuse me, object uh, envelope distort and then make with warp or a mesh, right? We can, you know, bend things that way. But I like making things with another object. So you can more clearly define how this text will, um, how it will be distorted. So in this case, I want this text to wrap and be um, on the inside of this shape. First off, let's actually make sure that it is on the top. I need to crank up the opacity. You can see that it's definitely on top of uh, that shape. So you select those two, go to object, envelope distort, make with top object. There it is. And this is a clipping mask. You can see this envelope, I can always change that text later on. So it's not like you're breaking it apart. I can have some fun with this text as well, selecting those to do the same thing. I'll just do this a couple times. Oaxaca, as it's called, Oaxaca in Mexico. I do want to go to this Day of the Dead festival. Um, but in general, we'll make that like so. And you could imagine what I'm going to be doing, just kind of moving this into place like that, making a skull. Okay. Um, so yeah, fantastic. Let's go ahead and turn this on. I have some other shading going on. But the key thing is this is actually uh, distorted appropriately. We can see the envelope, top of the envelope. It's obviously, we can edit it. We can edit the contents. If I click right there, change that in case I misspelled it, you get the idea. You do super cool things with it. Let's move on from there. Let's talk about uh, lines and strokes. So hopefully you're aware of the fact that yes, you can go ahead and apply different uh, width profiles. We get it. Um, and I want to do a bunch of leaves, right? So I kind of have somewhat of a leaf here, but I wanted to also show you right over here, the width tool. The width tool can extend this out. We could see that point right there. We can make this larger or smaller. Or what we could do is we can uh, actually hold down the Alt key and adjust the sides separately. So I could have one stroke like so, and let's just duplicate this one. 
right? For the second one, that I'm going to flip the direction of. And at this point, I'm gonna change because it's gonna be on this side. Holding down the Alt key, bringing that right over there. And now we have uh, just kind of a cool, I'm, I'm creating a sort of a, a depth of field look or just a sort of like, I'm adding more depth to one stroke. That's all this is, is one stroke, which is super cool. Uh, once you have that done, make sure appearance is set. Make sure you have this unchecked. So anytime you draw with the pencil tool, it's gonna use that last setting, right? So now I can go ahead and cover this with leaves like I'm doing right now. You get the idea, I could change this all later on. One of them is really funky over there. I could fix that in a second. You get the idea, okay? Let's come right over here and delete this previous one. So that's editing strokes, okay? And using the appearance panel, layering, stro layering um, strokes on onto a single line creating cool effects let's go beyond that because actually what i want to do is actually make a flower as well so i'm going to use not quite that setting and you could always reduce to basic appearance if you want to that will eliminate all those uh previous strokes and fills um but in general what i want is i just want something nice and light let's just go with this one I don't like that. That's kind of what I want. Because what I want to do now is I basically want to make a flower, okay? I like this shape right here, okay? A uh, number of people will tell you, hey, you want to you wanna make a flower? Let's do this demo, which is, you know, using the rotate tool, coming over here and then clicking once and then copying. So it's like, you know, 15%, for instance, and then copy and then command D. Rrr. That's one way of doing it, but look at how many shapes we're creating. We're creating too many. What we can do, select this object, and you should be using, under Distort and Transform, the Transform effect. So selecting the Transform effect, going down here to Preview, look at all these controls we have. We can transform this and make as many copies as we want. Okay, so... Um, I want this to go um, 360 degrees around. So I wanna, hmm, let's make like 12 for instance. I could do 360 divided by 12 tab. And that gives me 30 degrees. And then down here, that's where I'd put the 12 as well. The next thing I need to do is put my rotation point right down here where I clicked earlier. And there we have our flower as you can see um, and you could have as much fun of this with this as you want uh, whether it's moving it you can move it in or out depending on what you want to do and get any shape that you want and you can start to add multiple shapes to it as well uh, but all I'm gonna do is just kind of drop in the center part of this flower which I do not remember the name of to be honest with you uh, let's fix this Something like that works. There's our flower, okay? Using that transform effect. This does so much. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn on this other layer. You can see a number of other flowers that were made uh, really easily the same way, right? You get it, let's move on. Use that transform effect. There's a ton of other effects that you could use. I encourage you to peruse all of these. I'm gonna get into maybe a couple more. I'm actually gonna get into my favorite, to be honest with you. Let's move this over. What I see a lot of people doing is like, trying to make a somewhat pseudo 3D effect. So they'll duplicate uh, this text and then they'll take the pen tool. Maybe they'll outline it and they'll start doing something like this. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make this 3D and I'm just gonna have something like that. Um, yeah, you could do that. Uh, as a professional Illustrator user, you should probably be aware of 3D. Going into extrude and bevel for text or any shape that you want. And right in here, you can see I can change this to isometric. This is what I love. I turn on preview, I change this to isometric. This gives me that perfect angular look. We can increase that depth like so. And then you can have all the fun with it that you want, right? You can start mapping um, symbols actually to the faces. And as I click through these, watch, it's gonna start highlighting all the different faces of this 3D object. So I'm gonna put something on the side. Guess what, locate those flowers, put it on the side, right? 
go through it just like that. Well, you know, we can find the top part. Of course, the more complex your object's going is, um, the more you have to do this. But in general, that's how that works. Take advantage of this. This is still vector. It is just a an effect attached to that object that you can change at any point in time. And I encourage you to do so and, uh, you know, make something cool. Like what I was doing here. I kind of wanted like a pseudo max. And honestly, I'm just really into flowers. So there's that. I can show you the hearts version as well. Here's some hearts. Um, you can do the same for buildings. So here's some buildings that I was working on. And what are these? These are actually just shapes that you would draw, right? And then you would make that 3D like I'm doing now. And then you would map that art, which happens to be these different building profiles that I've already made onto these different sides, okay? So that's how you can create a, uh, an isometric landscape or cityscape, whatever the case may be like I was doing there, okay? Uh, let's call it from the right. So let me show you this, love this. Let me actually kind of turn on this draw layer if I could. Uh, I'm gonna do one more of these with this. This is just an effect, by the way. This is using color halftone. You take any gradient, by the way, let me show you. This is just a gradient. You add color halftone to it, and then you get these dots. I thought it'd be cool to dive into 3D, do a revolve. Um, not around this edge, but around the right edge. Okay, and then from there, I can map art to it, like I'm doing right now. There's my color halftone. It's that same texture being mapped and wrapping around that like so. Clicking OK, and sure enough, I could rotate this to get more of that, and that's how you can make those like AT&T type logos. Super easy, there's so much you could do in Illustrator. I was just giving you a taste when it comes to distorting and transforming, kind of beyond, beyond uh, you know, outlining text and manipulating vectors. There's so much more you can do. So thanks so much for watching.